Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and I'll be reviewing the Sm Friday Night Smackdown. And um, yeah, I've already seen uh, the King and Queen of the Ring. Then I went back and watched this because I really did think it was going to be, you know, maybe they just did it all on Raw and then go to Saudi Arabia, but no, they did everything in Saudi Arabia. So okay, cool. Uh, so there were spoilers for me, but it didn't really matter because I already had certain thoughts on Wednesday but before I do any of that time to get into uh, answering viewers um, so Zemo it says WWE wastes everyone let's be honest Vince or no Vince WWE finds a way to waste everyone even guys who have the it factor Solo is okay but he is not ready for this push WWE is giving him right now Tom has been in three singles matches on SmackDown and won two of them. He has won more singles matches than Solo, the so-called new leader of the bloodline. I have not seen too many matches of Satnam Singh, mostly because he looks too green. Lethal should be built up to be the next challenger for Mark Briscoe, but Tony is too busy with his elite friends to care. Everyone keeps saying TNA is bad or getting worse and I disagree. Sure, it's not perfect, and not all shows are good, but it is not getting worse. The company has gotten better and can still book some good matches and segments. It is just the lack of exposure that is really hurting them. Okay, just now I just gave that a thumbs up. Um, so, this push for Solo, he's been there longer than Tama Tonga. And it's, it's not necessarily about wins and losses. You know, you can lose every single thing, but you will still have far more experience than someone else. Just going on WWE since they isolate as if nothing outside really exists. So I'm just going on that only. When it comes to ring experience, Tom Tonga blows him out the water. Um, probably most people in WWE anyway, Tom has probably wrestled way more than any of them um, but y you know they need somebody and they're doing something with Solo Solo Sokoa I think is a transitional leader until the uh, until they unveil who they who he is talking about as the uh, tribal chief because they won't mention Roman Reigns so they're, I think they're building up for a rock return along with Roman Reigns and, and yada yada. I think they really want to get their WrestleMania match of the rock and Roman Reigns. Now, regardless of how this storyline goes, whether you're right, Zemo, or I'm right, or we're both right, or we're both wrong, right now I think they'll do everything to get that match with rock and Roman Reigns, which the rock can't win because he's not there. <laughs> um, that's just logic. You know, if, if he wins, but he's never around, it'll be like mogul affiliates. When whoever that dude was, you know, uh, 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 Ross or something like that, he, he's the one that brought it to light. He gave it the name and then he's not there. Just <laughs> um, Satnam Singh, yeah, you haven't watched him because he's green, and he doesn't really get me in matches anyway. He, re he really don't. Uh, but for the little bit that they do, Satnam, he's all right. He's all right. He's exceedingly green. He's neon. He's, he's radioactive green, but he's not doing too stupid of a job when he's in the ring. But he's not exactly in a company that's going to teach him psychology in ring logic and try to build him over the years to be a ring general which I think in pro wrestling if the wrestler the veteran the ring general isn't teaching the youngsters to be one if they're not leading them that in that direction then I think they're really doing a mis miscarriage of justice to themselves uh, and the company and the business in general um, he says Jay Lethal should be built for Mark Briscoe uh, to be to, to challenge him, but Tony's too busy with his friends. 
And I know what you mean by that. Yeah, he's too busy doing what they want to do to really focus truthfully on Ring of Honor like he could. And yeah, but I wouldn't want Lethal wasted on Mark Briscoe either. I wouldn't want that. Um, Jay Lethal, I think he might be transitioning to be a babyface, so it'd be dumb to put him against Mark Briscoe. But at the same time, if he's a heel, in a sense, it'd be genius to put him against Mark Briscoe just to get some seats, just to get some butts in seats and seats and push things. So I can see how it's a good thing and a bad thing, also depending upon if he's going to be a face or a heel. So it just all depends. And since Tony Khan is, as you say, and I do agree, he's too busy with his dumbass friends, nothing's going to get done properly. Because I haven't seen anything about Mark Briscoe except he'll be in tag matches and some crap like that. And I'm not watching Collision. I'm not watching Dynamite. I'm not watching uh, Rampage. I listen to Jim Cornette to get my updates on if he watches any of those, predominantly Dynamite. But that's about it. I'm not wasting my time watching Dynamite anymore. Just not. Um, okay, and everything you said about TNA. You know what? I, I, I have to agree with you. Is, is it bad? Um, okay, look. Is it bad? No. Straight up? No. No. But it's uninspiring. It's not bad. I've seen bad. We've seen AEW. We've seen certain indie shows. TNA isn't close to bad. Not even in the ballpark. It's just uninspiring. Uh, is, and, and is it getting worse? No, it, it can't. But I'm going to tell you this. Psychologically speaking, I'll just say this. It's not that it's getting worse, but it keeps disappointing the people that want it to be so good. And so... To them, when they see the next cringe, the next fail, and I ain't talking about moves, I'm talking about like this storyline isn't hitting, this delivery on the promo isn't making it, this, these people fighting against each other out of the clear blue doesn't make sense, this person making this match a what match for what reason to gain nothing and push nothing and do nothing is meaningless. That's what, that's why they say it's getting worse. It's not that it is getting worse. They're just tired of getting disappointed. Um, no, yeah, you're right. Yeah, not all the shows are good. I'm glad you can admit that. Because if you if, if you can't say that all the sh- if you can say all the shows are good, then I'm like, okay, you have to check your own credibility, man. But yeah, they're not all good, but they're not all horrible either. It's not getting worse. I, you know, I agree with that. Um, company yeah the pay-per-view seem to be getting on point the build-up there is odd um let's see do they need exposure i just want to say this okay just just bear this in mind if they gain exposure okay if they gain exposure showing the nation okay is advertised is is national and they show the whole nation on a just a random good night for some reason what they've done in the past two and a half to three weeks no nobody's gonna want that they're not gonna people will not want to watch that anymore they lack a bit of lighting they lack um, they, they lack how can I say this talent but not like you think not i'm just it's very blanket in what i'm saying like they need someone to teach promo skills they need more ring generalship they need someone that's okay this would be a good matchup let's get these two together they need better booking but they got to work on promos they got to work on ring and storyline psychology they really got to work on that the storyline psychology ain't making it. Um, let's see, who's this? Uh, Silk Hand written letter, ZG3GC, uh, had said, I don't think it's a response to Zemo, but this person 
says focus needs to shift towards developing younger talent. Uh, let me quickly read more. Okay, uh, focus needs to shift towards developing younger talent, potentially using existing titles like the Ring of Honor TV Championship as the top prize. Honestly, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but the flagship belt of any promotion is the world title, which I think is a dumb thing because you're not defending it against people from all over the world, and you're certainly got, not going to lose to anyone out of company, so it's kind of meaningless. But that aside, um, the TV championship should be the secondary title, and honestly, I, I, the most fought for belt. The Ring of Honor TV Championship should be the most fought for belt, almost making it look like it is the most coveted prize because whoever owns that has a shot to drop that and go for the world title. That's how it should be. Shane Taylor elevated that belt into prominence and then they killed it. That TV title, Shane Taylor, Shane Taylor Promotions, their heels, but I was behind that. Um, and then uh, this person still can't written a letter says technical wrestling Ring of Honor used to be known for its emphasis on technical wrestling which is a style of wrestling that emphasizes grappling holds and maneuvers and yeah technical wrestling yeah uh, your, you know your counters um, standing switch arm ringers and things like that you know catches catch can more stuff like that um not necessarily power moves and whatnot, but yeah. Uh, and then Strong Style, uh, this person says Strong Style, Ring of Honor used to also be known for its Strong Style matches, which are physical and hard-hitting style of wrestling that originated in Japan. Actually, Strong Style originated in the United States, NWA with the Funks, uh, Terry Gordy and them. And when they went over to Japan, which was a very not-so-rough style, the Japanese was kind of like, wow, they're they're really messing each other up. And they liked it. And Terry Funk and them was like, you know, you, you going to do this or look weak. So the Japanese was like, well, we can't look weak. So they helped them learn that and they started doing it. That's, that's where that came from. But I'm going to give that a like. Zimbo responded, I think, to this person. Uh... Let's see, wrestling has a problem pushing the younger talent, which, yeah, I'll get back to that. Sorry, still can't written. I'm, I'm going to, yeah, get back to that. Uh, wrestling has a problem pushing the younger talent. New Japan Pro Wrestling is especially guilty of this as they keep screwing over young stars in favor of their golden boys or popular superstars. Um, yeah, that is the main issue as well. They will age out their talent and make sure that they... The same five to six people, mainly five, stay in the main events. Like Okada, why were people bored? Because he was at, in New Japan, because he kept beating the same people in main events over and over and over. And you could easily see that Okada shouldn't have been beating these people. You could see it. It was night and day of style, power, effort authority in the ring and everything. Okada was like a little boy in there with his dad. It was terrible and people got sick of that. It was easily, anyone could easily see through it. Um, and, and focusing on the younger talent, they don't do it as well as they should or if at all. What they'll do is say, oh, guess what? There's younger people. Well, you can have your little area, which is why some companies will make up that 30 and under belt or the some at the 20, 25 or 20 and under or something, the youngsters title or some crap. I don't know, but they'll, they just separate it, you know, and is they need to bring up them young ones as the older ones, you know, and, and look, they don't they can't they don't know how to keep the elder ones, those that are in the, the mid 30s or whatnot, or late 30s or early 40s, keep them hot and still main eventing and bring up the young ones. Because out of the young ones, if you get a crop of 10, a maximum, I truly do think a maximum of two will show great promise. And they should be bought up. 
a little faster than the others. That's that's what I think. And 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 to um give you the a short sighted but very accurate uh dis- description on how what I, how every company is going to run their stuff like this, their young talent and whatnot, they book the talent the way they think financially. You're going to work with what what you're not just used to, but it's going to but what's going to turn a profit. You know, yeah, this young thing might turn a profit, but the majority of the audience don't necessarily know them. Even though if they do, these people in charge will think or believe people don't know them, so they're not going to really care. So they stick with the old guard. So that's that's what goes on with that. So that's normally I'd be done with SmackDown, but hey, I do the answering viewers. Uh, so done with that. Uh, so now to get on with this review of SmackDown. And we're going to just kind of just smash through this, all right? And then I am going to work on Pain and Agony Wrestling. And then while I am uploading, while I'm rendering that show, then I'll do the King and Queen of the Ring review. Uh, And then I'll probably get that uploaded once I'm done with that review. So that's pretty much the the orientation of how I'm going to do things, okay? So... So SmackDown ish, 524-24. So Queen of the Ring match, Bianca Belair versus Nia Jax. Um Jax wins with the bonsai drop or annihilator. Uh and I had to note, you know, Bianca is a master saleswoman. And I thought she and Nia looked amazing in the full suits. I get that they got to be, you know. Saudi Arabia and whatnot, and how the guys view that that type of thing with women, so they got to cover them up. But I personally would just say, look, y'all don't like women like that, you know, like actual equals and whatnot. So I'm not I'm not going to put my talent on. We we'll just have a total mass fest because that's exactly what you saw in the audience, just a total mass fest. <laughs> Cedra had asked me, he's like, well, what do you think the women are doing at home? I said, taking a break. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I said, taking a break. Finally having some, some quiet and decency. <laughs> and that's, that's what I was thinking. But um, at the end, I cut a small promo about buzzing through many competitors. I, I wonder why she said buzzing through. Why not smashing through? You know? Why not that? I'll break through you. I'll fold you up. I'll smash your head in something. But I don't know. Maybe women can't talk, but so tough there. Maybe. Um, ain't like they talk that tough when they're here. So, I don't know. Okay. Cody, Cody comes out to the ring to talk to uh, the people. But then Logan Paul comes out and he's talking. So, Cody called Logan a cosplayer wrestler. I'm like... Wow, so you 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 do listen to Jim Cornette. <laughs> Logan says he won't use the knucks on Cody, but Cody says his experience and his gut tells him that he has a second pair. So Cody gets a referee to fully check Logan Paul, and then he does a deep check, and then he finds the knucks in his pocket. Logan goes into the excuse talk, and he you know, and I admit it's funny. It was funny. It was I I I thought it was good. It was funny. I don't know how they got there. These are my they, these are my pants. These are my brother's pants. Yada yada yada. Okay. Um, and so then Cody cut a masterpiece of a promo on Logan, treating about him treating the ring with respect and how he'll be like he views him as a pro wrestler. He views him as 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 great and stuff, but he's not going to be any good until he starts putting in the work and all this other stuff. Cody was speaking from not just the heart, but his experience and what it means to be a pro wrestler, what it means to put food on the table, what it means to give the people what they want so you can get the life you want. To, to He was speaking all, I mean, I was, if he had kept going another 30 seconds, I probably would have been in tears. Cody was 
all in on that one. Uh, so next we get Bailey versus Chelsea Green. And be oh man, because of Zemo, I'm watching Bailey a bit more. Now I don't want to, but I'm doing it, and it's just involuntary because now I got to pay attention to things I didn't want to pay attention to. Uh, but Bailey comes out as the challenger, but she beats Green rather quickly. And if anyone's annoyed with me saying she comes out with the challenger, she came out. She came out first. The challenger always come out first. That's that's wrestling tradition. That's wrestling. That's so 101 that no one even talks about it. It's just the challenger, you know, they come out first. Not unless it's a mystery opponent. Anyway, after the match, uh, Piper Niven tries to beat on Bailey, but has a hard time until she can counter with the boss man slam. And then three centons on Bailey. So she leaves Bailey uh, all messed up and curling up. And I, 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 I looked at Bailey curling up and I thought about what I saw from others doing the same thing and I thought wow that is picture perfect right out of the 2k games so the 2k games captured that all that stuff perfectly but then I thought why do they all do it the same way and I was like this seeing stuff like this is what can get people falling out of love with wrestling learn to sell your own way because Bailey was selling to the point of like somebody might be feeling bad for it, might want to jump that railing, but at the same time, I'm like, it's it's kind of cookie cutter. So I was like, it kind of threw me out of the whole, oh man, Bailey, no, kind of threw me out of that. Uh, AJ Styles talked to Nick Aldis, and it's so damn convincing of a conversation. But AJ wants one more, more, one more shot at the undisputed title. I'll just tell him to, that personally. He do it all day, all week. AJ's like, yeah, but professionally, it has to be earned. Now, once he said that, I was hoping AJ would take a different verbal path, but he didn't. So that makes AJ look cheap. And I'll explain why. AJ goes right into telling him that he needs this. And all just like, it's going to take time. He goes, I don't have time. You know, I don't have time. And all just with much regret apologizes, but he can't help him. You can see all just really cares. But when, it when they tell you that you've got to earn it, if you're, I guess because AJ is a, a heel, but when, you're, when someone tells you, you you're going to have to earn it, that's when you say, what I got to do? Who do I got to beat? Whoever it is, put them in front of me. I'm going to knock them down. Just, I got to get that shot at that belt again. I got to. That's what you do. But instead, it was, you got to earn it. Well, that ain't happening. So, so, you know, just give it to me. That's what AJ did. So, it, that's a little, makes AJ look a little cheap. But, if he's, but he's a heel. He's healing it up. I ain't gonna browbeat it too much. But then we get to the part that I actually care about. I just wait for bloodline business. That's what I always title it, bloodline business. So Heyman makes light that WWE had to hire Tom, they, um, that they didn't hire Tama and Tonga in the past because they're dangerous people. And Sokoa's like, yeah, I know. He's like, these people have horrible backgrounds. He's like, I know. And I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of liking it. Sokoa, Solo Sokoa is like Sonny Colleone. That's who Solo Sokoa is. Yeah, he's, he wants things done physically. He wants it now. He doesn't care what they got to go through. We'll go to the mattresses. You know, we'll, we'll, you know we're going to go with the war. And I want the most deadliest, dangerous, thoughtless people I can find that don't care about their bodies or anyone else. They just want to get the job done. And that's what he's, that's what he's signaling. So, okay. Um, and then Paul said, due to their backgrounds, Tonga Loa couldn't make it through customs. So I'm like, beautiful, nice work on that. Nice work on that. It might have been, Loa might have been like, I ain't going over there. You know, <laughs> who knows? I don't know. But it might be something like that. It might be a visa thing or how messed up he is, you know. So that's a great thing to do. Then Thomas scares the bejesus out of Haman and cites winning 
it all by order of the tribal chief that thus no one names as they would have before. No one talks about who the tri tribal chief is. So to me, this indicates a new story starting. Most of what Thomas said was inaudible due to the wicked echo going on. Haman spoke, and when that echo started, he paused. And you could see the look on his face like, man, you know, y'all y'all messing up. He gave him time to fix it. It was masterful. That's what it looked like because he spoke, and you could hear it, not just where they were, but you could hear it pinging in the arena, and you could hear that feedback sound, and Haman just, whoo, boy. Yep, I'd fire everyone if you was I was in charge. Gave it a little bit, gave it a little bit, then he went to a spill. You can go back and watch it. It was masterful. Um, now, Wednesday, because I went through my spill on the whole storyline. I did all this. I listened, well, read what uh, Zimba had to say. And I think Wednesday, I was like, they can't let Tama Tama beat Randy Orton. Because I, I, it did not. It did not hit me until I, I just won't in the right mind space. I was just, I was somewhere else. But uh, what I wrote was it hit me on Wednesday as I thought they'd do a full tournament on Raw and then go to Saudi Arabia and finish it up. That Randy will not lose the Tama because of how Randy has been built. I wasn't thinking of that in my original hypothesis last week. Now I'm leaning in a bit more with Zimmo with a possible mixture of mine. That's you nobody know, came to how this is going to unfold the story and stuff. But I'm like, Randy, think about Mafia. Randy's a made guy in WWE. Tom is new. So, Tom is not going to win. Tom can beat the others because, you know, the LOL and he's new and it's like, we're going to make you look good. So, he got far in the king of the ring. People are going to remember that. They're going to remember that. So that's how that that's how that is. So you know you can't beat the made guy. Okay. Uh, so King of Ring match, Randy Orton versus Tamatanga, really good match for the most part. They made Tom look like a chump on the outside with the backdrops on the table. Randy hit the Ace Crush and got the pin. That 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 was it. And then after the match, Solo goes after Randy and Kevin Owens. He runs to the ring. We're both on point uh, to the ring to help Randy and the faces stand together. And at the note, yeah, we're on track so far. You know, you, uh, Zimo and I, we, you know, we, we, we there. I, I, and this is going to be the distraction for Randy to leave messing with the bloodline and whatnot. So that's all that is. So that's, that's what I think that is. So Randy's not, not messing with the bloodline, but not doing too much of anything else. And somewhere down the line, because they can't, this ain't going to last forever. But I would, I would say Royal Rumble just might be the blow-off match of this if they can stretch it that far before, just as the other storyline has finally been picking up, which might happen somewhere around Survivor Series or something like that. So... I wonder if, well, Sami Zayn, he's he's raw, so he's not going to be here. I wonder, I wonder who who is it going to be then? I I don't forgot. I don't, I don't keep track of the people in my head like that. Um, and I know I mentioned it earlier uh, in my hypothesis. All these other people, but it's gone right now. I'm just getting through the show. I'm going to get this uploaded. It's almost been 30 minutes. Uh, so. With that, I'm gonna get on the body here, work on pain and agony wrestling and get and get that rendering. Uh, I gotta get the matches done, then I'm gonna start rendering it. But this has been Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary on Friday Night Smackdown-ish. And I want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And with that, with that, and not just that, kinda only that, I'll see you next time.